Now that you have a good understanding of virtual machines, it's time to turn our attention to another one of the compute services, which is containers, which has grown a lot in recent years with the rise of Docker as a, as a standard for a lot of the industry now. Uh, and what are containers? Well, essentially, it's a standardized packaging for software and dependencies. So think in a virtual machine, I typically have my operating system, I install my packages on, I install all my dependencies on, and I try to make sure that configuration works. With a container, I kind of pre-do all that work, uh, make sure everything works together, and then when I want to run it, I just schedule it to run on a machine that's capable of running Docker containers. It's also a way to isolate apps from each other, and it works across both Linux and Windows servers, and allows separate apps to share the same OS kernel. Now what's given the rise to this? And ultimately it's application modernization because there are a lot of issues with monolithic applications. If we install all our application code into a single server, uh, minor code changes then require us to do full recompile and testing. The application becomes a single point of failure. Let's say one of those boxes there, the different colors you see on screen, one of those pieces goes wrong. Uh, well, it potentially takes down the entire system and the application is difficult and often expensive to scale. So the answer to this is to break it apart into what we call microservices, where each service is its own individual application, if you will, uh, and can be scaled separately. There's this concept of 12 factor applications. You make the app independently scalable, stateless, and highly available by design. And it helps to compare and contrast these because when you think about monolithic, well, it's very simple to deploy into module refactoring, vertical scaling, technology monoculture, or some of the themes we see there. When you look at microservices, it's all about partial deployments. Again, deploying the piece of the entire application that I need uh, as needed. Strong module boundaries, horizontal scaling is the big difference. So with containers, and this is something to look out for on some of the exams, is if I want to scale out horizontally, containers are very, very good for that because I can just scale out that particular service that I need to, as opposed to with monolithic, again, if typically, you know, somebody comes and wants to scale the application, you just add in more CPU, add in more memory to the virtual machine to scale it. Uh, and the other big thing with microservices allows for a diverse set of technology, you know, from a stack point of view. Let's then look at some of the keys to microservices. First of all, we have functional decomposition. As you can see by now, all those services tightly coupled together that are error prone become individual services. That's the first part of everything. Then we look at horizontal scale. Scale what we need to, not what we don't. This could mean that for virtual machines, if we've got an application that's a mixture of services, we scale the virtual machines horizontally in a scale set. We could scale the containers. We could use serverless functions. We can kind of choose what we want to use there. In addition, now we can choose to decouple the data much more efficiently. I can pick the best database for the service. So if service one would make better use of Oracle, we can do that. Service two, Azure SQL. Service three, Redis. Maybe service four, we've got Azure SQL there, but it could be like MongoDB or Cosmos or something like that. So you can really start to see the benefits that containers provide in addition to just the speed and efficiency when you deploy in a container they deploy very very quickly when compared to a virtual machine they're up and running very quickly and again they're not as error prone because everything's been tested all the dependencies are coupled together so we deploy the container we're, we're good to go so to drill this home let's look at containers versus virtual machines well again on the left if you remember from the virtual machines module we have our hardware on the bottom our hypervisor and then we deploy the operating system and application in each virtual machine. With Docker containers on the right, we still have our server, so that's our hardware. Uh, and now that could be running, say VMware uh, or Hyper-V, or it could be an Azure virtual machine before it gets to the operating system there. So again, the operating system here is like Windows or Linux. Then we run the Docker engine on top of that, but now we can just deploy our application so you can see we're scaling and scheduling the applications, we don't have to keep scaling out that underlying operating system. That's not to say you don't have Docker nodes underneath that scale out to support the applications. That's obviously got to happen. We have to have enough CPU, memory, etc., to kind of make all the magic happen. Uh, but once you've kind of figured out uh, how to manage that service and things like Azure Kubernetes service make it very easy, uh, now you can focus on the application itself and, and scaling that out.